I am uh, Adriano Ercolani for Cinema Daily US, and I have the pleasure to talk with Dave Boyle and uh, Ken Tukaku, who are the director and uh, the main character of the new series House of Ninjas that will be streaming on Netflix uh, on February 15th. Uh, first of all, thank you for the for, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And uh, I would like to start with my first question for uh, Dave. Uh, I watched the, all the episodes and I found that is a very compelling balance between a light on comedy, a drama, action, of course. You are also uh, one of the screenwriters. How did you work in order to put everything together and find this balance between the different tones? Yeah, I, well, I'm I, I, re I really am I'm glad that you said that because that that tone was sort of the whole point for me of of making this show was was having you know the right balance between kind of the the thrills, the suspense, and then the you know a poignant family story, and and uh, and then the com you know the 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 family also sort of brings a, a comedy element to that as well. So I think from the storytelling um, point of view, uh, when we were crafting the story, it was all about kind of how do you sort of make the uh, how do you make sort of the enemy be enough of a threat um, that the that the that the suspense really works, but also not make it so that it's so dark that the comedy and that the the family story never really doesn't shine through. And so there was a lot of sort of um, there was a lot of trial and error and a lot of discussion about trying to find that balance. I think one thing that you know that we were both on the same page about from the beginning was that this is a that this is a family a family story you know that we want the um, the family to really shine through as characters as individuals and also sort of as a unit like they're all they're all the main characters in their own story um, and so I think that you know from the writing perspective a lot of it was just figuring out what each one of them really really wants and their sort of their personal feelings about their identity as a as a ninja and sort of how that defines their relationship with each other because they all have a different level of commitment they all have a different level of passion about it um and yet they all have to come together to fight a, a common enemy and so from the storyteller perspective that was it and then and then from from kind of the directing standpoint i think that also um the the use of music became a a, a big a big sort of tool in terms of helping the audience understand the tone of the story and what they're supposed to be, um, how they're supposed to be experiencing the story of the family. Hmm. And my next question is for Kento Kaku. Uh, Haru, your character, as we were saying, is a mix of, uh, is funny in some scenes, is romantic, he has action. Which side of uh, Haru resonates more with who you are? Hmm. Hmm. その存在みたいなものに気づくこともできたし、なんかすごく未熟なんだけれども、なんか彼がこの島の中で成長していく姿みたいなのが僕はすごく一緒に彼と寄り添えて楽しかったです。Actually, uh, following your uh, your answer, uh, I would like to ask you about the character of Haru. Uh, which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Which has been for you the most challenging part of making this series? Many in this show. Mm, maybe uh, episode five, and uh, uh, when we discuss about like, uh, not like some fuma ga 
あ俺が。あ、oh, あ、えっと、告白するときの。So, ああ、はいはいはい。えっと、in episode 5、uh, the confession, when,、mm. when uh, Haru confesses to his family about his past.、Mm. That was a very difficult scene to me, like a,、uh, you know, so I aimed for,、um, how do I say this?、Uh, I, I try our best not to explain too much with the dialogue. You know, I mean, I wanted to tell the story with just expression.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say The most emotional scenes in the, in the whole series. And uh, uh, Dave,、uh, is there any、uh, action movie or any kind of other movie that you watched and watched and、uh, in some way maybe inspired you when you started thinking how to compose other ninjas?、Um, I, I did watch.、Uh... A lot of movies with the team beforehand, especially more for kind of the suspense scenes. And then、um, one, of the, one of the movies that we did, that I did watch with the, the action coordinator, Tabuchi san, or that we, we watched scenes from and talked about, was、uh, the Steven Soderbergh's Haywire from about 10 years ago, which was sort of a, a light frame of reference. Because I think one thing that we talked a lot about was that.、Um, We wanted, the, we wanted the action scenes to feel you know, very、uh, practical and, and, and dirty in a way, but also visually very clean,、uh, you know, so that you always kind of know what's happening and everything. So it's not gritty in the way that it's you know, like handheld and confusing. It's, it's more like it just feels like you're actually watching two people fight to the death. Instead of, instead of it being super stylized, we,、um, you know, the, the super stylized action is really, is really, really great when, the, when people do it well.、Um, but what we were going for was,、uh, you know,、um, something a little bit more grounded and just,、uh, uh, I guess, very sh- shinobi esque in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, try, trying to also find situations where,、um, Like, for example, in episode one, two people fighting in a, in a dark nightclub and nobody is noticing that it's happening right under their noses.、Um, so, in, instead of having something that's very flashy, you know, something that's kind of down to earth and, and practical, but also very, very clean visually. And so,、um, you know, Haywire came up as a reference. A lot of other movies came up as, as references in terms of just how to, how to practically kind of make something work in a lot of ways.、Um, But we also did try to just do our own thing and build it from the ground up. Like the, the action team and Kento and,、um, would, would work for a long time on coming up with these, these sequences. And then we would you know, you know, kind of work out how to, kind of, you know, how to show it in a way that really puts the audience right in there when necessary. Or you know, when, when do we want to be sort of watching from an objective distance? And so choosing when to be sort of, you know, In, in it or being observing it was, was sort of a, a big part of kind of the, the directing job on this one. Whereas the action team were the ones who really developed, you know, t- taking the, the basically what was happening on the script and coming up with, you know, the action to, to really help each of these characters sort of express themselves through movement. Absolutely. Talking about the sequence that you mentioned in the first episode. I don't know if it was a reference, but I, I actually thought about Michael Mann's Collateral and then Miami Vice, the sequence in the club that is that like that action taking place with no one noticing. And that was actually the amazing part of, of those sequences. And I, I, okay, I don't want to give too much away, but I think that the first, the, the first part of the last episode is something crazy. The action, the settings, the tone, and the rhythm. I started thinking about some kind of Akira Kurosawa movies in some way. So, can you, can you talk about how you decide to organize all that action, but also that vision in some way? I mean, we, 
and and this was something we talked a lot about, you know, because we we had the we had the scripts up and up through episode seven, and then figuring out like how to get all these dominoes knocked down so that it's just an endless sort of it's an endless avalanche of action, and then you feel like it's over, and then it's not over, but you know, but in a good way, in a way where you want more, and that that kind of thing. Um, I mean, one thing that we were really really clear on is that we wanted all the family to have a really, really big role in that, in that final conflict. Um, and then, so coming up with fun ways to sort of balance the tone also, because this, this, you know, the tone of this show is, is very, very specific in the way that it balances sort of the dark and the light and the, you know, the, the violence and the comedy and everything. And so how do we sort of bring that back in the last episode so that everybody sort of end, you know, so that we're ending in a place so that it still feels like House of Ninjas, <laughs> if, if that makes sense, but also having the danger and having, you know, the jeopardy in, in place. Um, so one of my favorite scenes, I mean, I'm, I'm glad, so glad as you said that, because that's, that's also my favorite part of the whole series is basically everything leading up to the final conflict. And then uh, Kento's sort of final confrontation in the fog without giving too much away. Um, and that was that was a scene where we just decided to just go for it. You know, we just decided to just leave it all on the field. And, you know, it's the it's the last episode. So we really wanted to to just make it a treat for the audience. And uh, without giving too much away, you know, some of that some of that final confrontation um you know, was a lot of those ideas were from were from Kento, actually, after he read a first trap, he's like, why don't we take it one step further? Why don't we take it one step further? And we just kept going until, you know, um, and then that was, you know, uh, when we were shooting it, uh, that scene in the smoke, the the effects department and the lighting department spent a long time working together to kind of get the look of the fog exactly right. So we were shooting at Toho Studios. And they lined up a whole bunch of space heaters on the catwalk up above. And then were, you know, they were basically, you know, pumping in fog below. But they had to get the temperature exactly right so that the fog would kind of hang in the air in the in the right place for the right amount of time so that we could do the take. And then, you know, but we would have to redo it, you know, for every take. Um, but that just, you know, it, it has such a, a particular practical look to it. And then when the actors walk through that, then the fog reacts to their, to their movement and everything. And, uh, so I was really, really sort of grateful for their, their great work on it. And then, you know, when we took that into sort of the color grade, the very last step, we, um, you know, the, the, the colorist basically made a black and white version of that scene and overlaid it over the color and then that's what creates that sort of interesting, um, very, you know, it's not black and white, it's not, it's not color, uh, but it does sort of, it, it did become sort of a visual homage to a lot of the, uh, you know, like the old scenes from Kurosawa movies, like Throne, uh, Throne of Blood, I think, where they come wandering out of the fog. And I mean, he he tended to do that. He has a, a lot of great scenes like that. Um, not to not not that we're comparing ourselves in any way to to uh, to to a master like that, but it, it was a fun way to sort of work in a little a little bit of a visual homage there. Oh, yeah. Mission accomplished, totally. It really worked. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad you liked it. Uh, I think my time is uh, is up. So thank you very much for the interviews. And I really enjoyed the, the show and uh, good luck. Uh, hopefully, I can wait to see season two. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Thank you.